Hello everyone, Delaf Kripanik here and welcome to another segment on the LCC channel. Today we are going to talk about the Signal LCC. Uh, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. This is a node for the LCC system. As you recall, a node is where the brains live. This is where we um, do the logic and where the actual processing power for the network lives. A um, couple things to note when uh, talking about it. First of all, the signal LCC basically has eight input outputs. They can be configured either way and then 16 drivers for signal lights and it's set up specifically for signals, hence the name. Although, point out that they can also drive other things as needed if you need a lot of outputs. Um, it can be used on a control panel or whatever. Um, each of these um, uh, I.O. for the actual inputs and outputs is limited to 25 milliamps, 5 volt, volt logic level. Um, the LEDs are pre-configured with a current limiting resistor. I'm not sure what the current rating is, but basically you can just add resistors. I imagine two or three or LEDs. I imagine you can use two or three on each one and you'll be fine. We're going to go through that in a minute, but before we get into the details of it, I do want to show you something here. Um, every node on... Uh, on the planet, right? Uh, every node that's created has its own node ID and when you pick up one of these you'll see that right here on the package is the node ID. Now what's important about this is that this is the unique address for this node in t the entire world. It's, it's absolutely unique to this node which means if you're in a modular group you can plug your modules together and then put your nodes onto a common shared network and every one of them will be unique and all of them can read from each other so that's really cool. Um, the manufacturer does put that information right on the bottom you can see a little sticker there. Now to be honest you know when you mount this onto a panel um, that's usually going to be now hidden so what I do is just take a fine point sharpie and I write the last two or four digits on the edge of the uh, uh, cable, can connector cable, uh, uh, cable connector here that um, so that way I know you know what the what the node ID is after I install several of these right so that's something to note now we're gonna also point out there's two kinds of signal LCC's there's a signal LCC P which is P for pins and that's what this one is it has little pinouts for the connector for the signal or there is the signal LCC dash S and the only difference is that on the S it has screw terminals along the edge here instead of pinouts depending on your application maybe you want the wiring directly landing onto the node and you use the screw terminal type or if your signals or whatever your panel is a little bit more remote you can use the uh, the pin type and then you just have a jumper or some wire connectors that you can uh, take them across the layout to wherever your your final termination is by the way while we're here I'm going to show you real quick um, if you're going to get into this you're going to want to get yourself a roll of this 10 conductor cable. So it's a flat cable, it's a structured cable. Um, you can get it through RR circuits or a number of other places. I bought a hundred foot roll and I'm about halfway through it right now. Um, very helpful that you you know don't have to worry about jumpers and stuff like that. What goes with it is a structured connector type. These are called IDC connectors. It's a two by five or a total of ten pin structure connector. The neat thing about this is that they have, you can kind of see it there, um, teeth that bite right into the cable so you basically all you have to do is really simple is you slide that in and, and now you've got uh, a connector you can use some um, I use slip jaw pliers and just gently press this flat if I mash this down it'll pierce the actual connector conductors uh, and the uh, and the wire uh, the wires themselves inside of the cable and make the connection you can make these to whatever length you want then and uh, makes it a whole lot easier to wire out. And plus, these look really neat on uh, on the control boards and things like that. So anyway, uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and do a walk around the Signal LCC, point by point, step by step, step, and uh, what is included. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here you can see the Signal LCC dash P because it's got the pinouts on the end here. So this is your typical board configuration, what it looks like. Um, just for grins, I'll go ahead and show you the dash S. This is the S, and you can see they're very similar. The only difference being that now we have these compression terminals on the end. So let's go ahead and walk through this all the way around the edges so that you can see what each of the pieces do. 
and how you wire them out. Okay, So this is kind of a schematic view. Again, this is the dash P version. You can see the connectors here are defined. Um, oh, by the way, all this can be found inside the LCC manual, which is on the um, RR Circuits website. Um, but this is hopefully just going to get you kick-started a little bit. <clears throat> and by the way, the way that RR Circuits numbers things is they always go clockwise. So you start at the top and you go around like a clock. Okay, as you can see, we've got the pinouts here for our four different signal heads. And uh, again, the, the numbering is always clockwise. So H1 would be your first head, head 1, common, green, yellow, red, and lunar. Head 2, H2, common, green, yellow, red, and lunar. And then you go around H3, common, green, yellow, red, and lunar. And finally, H4, head number 4 for the signal of common, green, yellow, red, and lunar. So the pattern repeats itself, and you just work your way around clockwise. Um, if we jump over to the LCC-S for screw terminal, we have the same kind of a pattern, except this time we have the common, green, yellow, red, lunar, and common, green, yellow, red, lunar. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Let's go ahead and just start at the upper left-hand corner. And the first thing you see here is this indicator that's 20. Okay, what in the world does that mean? It means that when you're doing your calculations for the amount of uh, power the uh, LCC system is needing, this board itself, the actual physical board, takes 20 milliamps. So if you got a board, it takes 20 milliamps. If you have two of them, it's 40 milliamps, and so on. Keep in mind that the power point was rated up to 500 milliamps per branch, right? It was one amp total, but 500 milliamps per branch. Now this number here <coughs> is the uh, number of milliamps for just the board. If I start powering up each of the pins, I need to add that to it. So I would allow definitely more than 20 milliamps per load, uh, per, uh, per node here. Uh, but in any case, it gives you an idea for a starting point. Okay, so that's the upper left-hand corner. The first thing we run into is this giant connector called IO1. And again, this is where you have your eight inputs or outputs. Now, one thing to note about this, it's that structured connector. And you notice it's got a little cutout right here. That's So it only goes into the connector one way. And plus, you've got a little diamond or a little triangle here indicating which one is pin one. If we jump into that, you'll see that um, there's a schematic for that. And basically that pin 1 corresponds line 8. It's the opposite. Okay, so pin 1 connects to line 8 on the actual node. So this is the pin number on the connector. This is the connection name when you get into configuring that node. What's the actual output? So pin 1 connects to output 8, pin 2 to 7, 3 to 6, 4 to 5, and so on. And then on 5 and 6, you actually have access to power and ground. Everything on the LCC node runs on 5 volts. It's your, back in the day, it was called TTL logic. And uh, so you have your power and ground, 5 volts and ground on 5 and 6 on the nodes. And then line 4, 3, 2, and 1. Again, these are inputs or outputs on 7, 8, 9, and 10, respectively. And then the same idea here. Hang with me again. Your pin 1 is the little triangle shape here. On your IDC connectors, uh, here's your and you know pin numbers are are actually these are your connection names one two three four whereas your pin numbers go one through ten the opposite direction. Uh, make sure that you put your tracer consistently on wire one because if you start getting that confused, you look at one end of the cable, and then you got to make sure the other side is actually you know mirroring that, and you always want to know which which pin is. Uh, associated with wire one. Okay, does that make sense? In any case, um, the consistency is an important thing. Anyway, enough of that. So let's go back to our signal LCC node. A little bit about what's going on there. The next thing you'll come to is a jumper that says CANCC. Now this is something really cool. Um, when you have LEDs, especially signals on LEDs, you don't want to run two wires from every one of the signal lamps all the way back to your module uh, or to your node, whatever. Um, the, the reason is you're going to have just a big bundle of cable there. You might as well share the common off of one end of the LEDs so that you don't have to do a bunch of wiring and then for each of the different lights and you only have to bring one unique wire back. Let me show you what that looks like. So you have this idea of a common 
anode and a common cathode. So you can wire these lights, and this shows a whole bunch of them here. You probably don't have this many, but you can either do it through a common anode or through a common cathode. And depending on the signal you get, you can get signals that are set up with common anode or common cathode. And this, the information with the signal will tell you um, how they wired out those lights, or if you're wiring your own, you can decide. So common anode basically means it's sharing the plus or the power side of your circuit and then it breaks it out to each of the LEDs and then you switch on and off the minus or the ground for each of the LEDs to turn one on or off, right? And that's a little bit different than the common cathode. You're switching on or off the plus end, the, the positive end, the plus five on it goes through the LED and then that shares a common cathode. Does that make sense? All right, anyway, so what's really cool about the signal LCC is depending on how you fix this jumper, you can do common anode or common cathode. Now, it only applies, you know, one way. You can't have half of these common anode and the other half common cathode. What you've got to do is pick which way you want to wire out your signal LCC. But what's cool here is that you can get all these to, um, to play together with either system, okay? We kind of talked about this a little bit before, but here's where you wire out all your different indicators. Um, they are grouped by signals, and when we get into the CDI, you know, so that's the configuration tool, you'll see how to configure those lights. Now they're indicated at lunar, red, yellow, green, and common, um, but you can make them for whatever you want. You know, you could use two of them for red and green here, and you could use two of them for red and green on some other applications. Totally up to you. It's just a way of designating them. So this is your H refers to head, head one, head two on your signals. And as like I said, you go around the corner, here's head three and head four for your uh, four different signals, each with four different indications. And that's the way they number them. Again, work clockwise and you see that the pattern repeats C, G, Y, R, L, and so on around all the way, C, G, R, Y, L, and onward. I didn't want to jump over this here. There's a little connection, generally not used, but when you um, have a layout that sometimes may have intermittent power supplies or maybe somebody shorts out. You know how your detection disappears? You might have detectors feeding back into the signal LCC and if you lose the detection for a moment, <laughs> follow me on this, now your signals will start flickering around because they say, oh the train's not there anymore, it's shorted out, I don't have a signal. What this does is if you lose layout power on this little bus here, it, tr it tracks the power to the layout through an on-off, and this can come from like just a power detector, but it's got to be five volts, right? So five volt input. But you basically connect it here, and it'll if you lose layout power, it'll lock in the last indication off of your I/O and just leave it there. And then when the power comes back, it'll start processing logic again. So working our way around, head three, head four, and then you've got these blue and gold buttons. You know, to be honest, I've never used them. It's something that's kind of a legacy NMRA standard. Um, uh, frankly, I would just ignore them and just go right past them. And then working our way around, we have the two uh, connectors here for your uh, Ethernet cable, which is actually the CAN bus cable. So it doesn't matter which one's which. There's no go into or go out to. You just connect them in a daisy chain. So that's it. That's the Signal LCC. Um, hopefully this was helpful, helpful to you. And um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the, in the comments section. I'll see if I can get back to them. And we'll see you here next time. Have a great day.